Hi guys, I'm Jordan Needham, this is JHAM3D, and I'm gonna be showing you how to make geometry react to audio, an audio visualizer inside a blender using geometry nodes. This is something that you've been able to do for a long time in Blender with various different methods. But once Geometry Nodes came out, there was a lot of tutorials on how to do it. Uh, but then Blender completely changed their Geometry Nodes uh, from their like beta version to their new version, which we're using now. And I don't want to get into it, but um, here's how to do it. It's really quick, and I am confident that anybody can learn how to do this. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add in Shift A and I'm gonna add an empty plane axis. We can go ahead and hide that for now because we're not really gonna be using that yet. Um, and then let's just go over here to the geometry nodes tab and let's shift A, add in a cube. Um, and we're not really gonna be using that mesh necessarily. So we can disconnect this input and shift a add in a grid plug that into the geometry output you can see we basically just made a plane right okay um and then we can increase the vertex or the vertice count on it but i'm not too worried about that yet um okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go shift a add in a cylinder because this is just um you know what i saw somebody else using a cylinder when they did this tutorial i think it was like default cube or something um so i, I don't want to do that i'm gonna be a little bit different so we're gonna add in an icosphere instead not that it means anything else um and let's do instance on points okay so you can see the setup here, pretty simple right now, but what happened? Like all our shit disappeared. That's fine, okay? Because this is expected to happen. So let's actually just drag. You can click over here on your icosphere in a, um, in a layout and uh, make sure that you still have your initial cube selected with the geometry nodes modifier on it, but drag this cube down in here and you can see we have an object info node now now all you're going to do is plug this into plug the geometry into the instance and you can see whoa something happened but we have way too many icospheres okay um there's a few things going on here but that's okay let's add in a shift a uh distribute points on faces Okay, uh, still got some problems, but you can see that something cleared up with the clipping a little bit. Let's decrease this density. And you can see it, we're mainly having a scaling issue. Okay, so let's just scale this down um, to something that's more manageable like that. You can see here are all of our icospheres. Um, and you can kind of visualize where this is going now. Um, and if we play with the size of our grid, on this X and Y value, you can see it increases the size of the grid and simultaneously increases the amount of points on that grid and therefore the amount of instances because they are instancing on the points. I know, crazy how that works. <laughs> okay, so now we have these icospheres, but this is all about audio react. So how are we gonna make it react to the audio? Okay, let's select our empty. Um, it's kind of cluttered. It's, you know, immersed in all this clutter, but you can see we selected the empty. And let's go into, um, let's go into animation and let's change this tab to the graph editor. Let's hit I and add a location keyframe. And now in our graph editor, we're gonna hit key and we're gonna hit bake sound to F curves. If you're familiar with audio react, um, uh, audio visualizers inside a blender, this is something that you're familiar with uh, from the first place. So um, let's see, I'm gonna add some music here. Just pick something. I am picking something that, you know, won't get me copyright striked. 
So, I got an awesome Artlist subscription. I'm not sponsored by them, but I highly recommend them. Super cool music, like genuinely stuff that I would listen to sometimes, so. Um, so, we baked that sound to this um, empty, and if we press space, we can see that the empty is moving around, and it's actually moving according to the values of the sound. So, but we have a couple of things going on here that we don't want. Um, first of all, I only want it to affect the Z axis. I only want it to go up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually uh, go through and I'm actually gonna just remove all the keyframes on the X and the Y axes. So now you can see it's only moving up and down on the Z axis, which is exactly what we want. Okay. Well, that's cool, but um, two problems here. One, we can't even hear the music, so what is that? Okay, I'm gonna show you right now how you can hear the music. It's super simple. It's kind of weird that they did this, but we're just gonna wanna open a new tab, go into video editing, and make sure that this is all the way back at uh, one or zero, because you wanna make sure that your frames, uh, the music syncs up. Uh, which you'll see here in a second. So go into add and let's go add sound and um, Choose the song that you chose Which I believe I chose this one. I really hope that was that was correct <laughs> and Now you can see it is in the sequencer. It's in our video editor and if we press spacebar to play You should hear stuff. I hear stuff Oh my God. <laughs> okay, let's go back to the start. And we can see now that our empty is moving according to the audio that I just uh, placed in here. But it's important to note, I just wanna explain this. This audio in the sequencer, in this video editing tab, this audio is actually not what's affecting the empty. The audio that's affecting the empty is the audio that we baked in to its location uh, F curve. So it's important to know that because if I move this around, it's not going to change the values on this. This really and this video sequencer is just for our like, you know, our audio reference so that we know kind of what's going on and uh, that we can tell the audio is synced up. So, so now we have this empty moving according to our audio and I'm gonna go ahead and just extend these frames just because I don't want it to keep looping. Now all we gotta do is make these points or these instances react to the audio and you probably can see where this is going. Okay, let's go back to our geometry nodes tab. Let's go into, um, Yes, yeah, shift A, set position. And then um, we want to go and drag this empty to get an object info node. And then shift A, random value. And uh, first let's plug in this random value into the offset just to see what's going on here. So we can see it is assigning a random value to the offset of these instances. So we only want it to affect the Z axis. So we're gonna use a vector, a vector value instead of a float value. And this way we can clamp the um, individual axes. So X, Y, and Z we can control individually. So um, we can see here if we, let's see, like, yeah, we can, we can affect the individual axes now, if you get what I'm saying. You can see that. Just play around with it yourself. It's very self-explanatory, actually. Um, okay, so now we've offset the position, but it's not, it's still not reacting to anything. And that's because we didn't use the, um, we didn't instance the location of this object, the empty object yet. So let's shift A, let's add in a math node. And uh, let's put, change this to multiply and then let's plug the location of this object info which is our location of the empty 
into the bottom value. And now let's press play. Just like that, you have made a geometry node music visualizer. I know it's actually pretty easy. When I found this out, I was like, I am upset that it took me this long to find this. <laughs> and I'm sure there's other tutorials on YouTube that do this. But anyways, one thing that I forgot to mention, and I, I just kind of wish I would have included this, but once you figure out how to make uh, your geometry nodes react to audio in the way that we did, we only played with the offset and you know the position of it but of course we can use this similar sort of technique to animate all different types of values so i really highly encourage that you play around with this sort of thing and try plugging it into a whole bunch of different things like rotation and scale and um just different transforms like that and you can make some really sick things because that's something i did in the video that i i made yesterday and uh, it's really cool what you can do. Once you like crack a code with geometry nodes, crack a code, um, There's it just opens the door to so many more really cool things. And you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I didn't know how to do this at all yesterday. And now I can just like, now it just feels easy. So yeah, I, anyways, I encourage you to do that. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helped you. And let me know, you know, if you f make anything really crazy with this, I know I, I experimented with this yesterday and made this cool little like music visualizer for a song I liked in just a couple of hours. It was super fun. So if you made anything really cool, um, after learning stuff from this video, just send that to me on Instagram. My link is in the description. It's jham.3d. I'd really love to see your creations. And also hit that like and subscribe button to see more Blender tutorials from this channel and all stuff 3D. I have no plans of stopping at all. And if you are interested in hiring me for commissions on artwork, uh, link is in the description below. For one, you can contact me on my Instagram. That's my preferred way of contact. But also my portfolios are down below. And I know that that is like the most important thing. If you, um, you know, you can't say you're an artist and it'd be like, hey, I do commissions and then have no portfolio. So that I make it super easily accessible. So in the description below and um, thank you guys so much. I'm Jordan Needham, this is Jham3D and I'll catch you next time. Bye.